The Monerotopia Price Report segment is sponsored by Local Monero. Avoid using KYC exchanges. Buy and sell Monero directly for fiat, peer-to-peer. Aloha, body. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Good morning. Good, good. good Moving man. along. How about you? Oh, I'm good. I was I was excited to hear Doug's rant, but you're holding out. <laughs> Please, no. <laughs> he has a lot to say. I'm good. He doesn't stop. Anybody I was on Reddit just now trying to find the post you're talking about. Oh, oh we put it in yeah, the, we, we the just comments. put it up uh, this morning. All right, I'll check it out later. Well, so that I can avoid also random denied because I put it up as a question. Apparently, you can't put questions on, on Reddit. Yeah, on it's our, very strange. Our, so. Because I posted, mm-hmm. it as, are you going to Monerotopia? And it labeled it as a question. But now it's up. You have to use sub- suggestive programming. You are going to Monerotopia. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> then they would leave it up. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, take it away, man. Another, oh, another big week. You know, I, yeah, it was kind of a big week. You know, I had one more um, one idea about Monerotopia. Um, finding a hacker garage might be useful because it seems like people that like Bitcoin or into crypto hang out at hacker garages sometimes. And I'm sure in Mexico city, I mean, there's like 20 million people there. There's gotta be some crypto and Bitcoin meetups. So, um, I might go down there and just try and, uh, I don't know, infiltrate (laughs) some of the meetups and uh, hand out some cards and see if people want to come. Yeah. Well, actually now you remind me. So we're going to be down there (laughs) March, March 9th. March 9th. Let me write that down. March 9th. Yeah, March 9th. We'll act, we're actually going down there. Because we want to make sure everything's sorted out with the venue and the restaurant and all, everything else we got going on. And then additionally, we're going to throw a meetup down there. We're going to throw a Monero meetup yeah, at the, the Bitcoin Embassy Bar. That's so cool. Right in line with what you're talking about. So I guess they have a lot of crypto meetups there at the Bitcoin Embassy Bar. And we're working with the Decred uh, guy on that. And he's helping us out. What's his name? Decred guy? Elion. Elion. Yeah, he yeah was he's he's local to Mexico ago. City. Very nice guy. He's helping us do that. So hopefully we'll we'll get some people to come out and yes. then we're gonna give away some free tickets there in exchange for trying to get locals to help us onboard other locals, like make them aware of the conference. Is the Bitcoin embassy bar is that like um is that related to start nine? The uh the embassy I node? I don't think so. I don't think it's related. Okay. It's the Bitcoin bar in Mexico City. Cool. I don't know. Could be. Could be related. I, I don't know. No idea. Yeah. All right. Well, everyone that's, uh, I mean, I think it was already said, but if you're on Twitter and you want to see the charts instead of just uh, listening to a bunch of jibber jabber, definitely recommend tuning into YouTube at 720p. And uh, yeah, let's get started. Um, so we had some surprising, maybe not too surprising results this week. Um, let's go ahead and go all the way to crypto. We'll start with crypto. So to me, the uptrend still looks like it's intact, but um, you know we kind of have a ceiling across the board. And at this moment in particular, I'm more uncertain about this pump, about this rally than I have been at any time since it started. So we really wanted to break through uh, this level right here. We really wanted to try and get above that 25K. It's definitely posing us uh, significant resistances uh, here on Bitcoin. I've tried to draw these lines as many different ways as I possibly can. And I think this is probably the best way to draw it just a very simple um, sort of ascending channel here with the splitter in the middle. I'm not too concerned yet, but um, I did bounce out of a shit coin or two just to um, just in the anticipation that maybe we're going to have more downside. Um, I was fairly confident, if you remember last week, that uh, you want to keep your chips in play. And for the most part, I have, but I felt like it was worth taking some profit and then waiting for a better re-entry. I started to lose confidence somewhere around uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. I think I posted about it on Twitter. So for those of you that are interested in price updates, um, definitely follow me on Twitter because I'll put out midweek stuff. And when it comes to price, things can change very quickly. You can you can see something that looks nice. It's setting up well. And then uh, some kind of invalidation pattern shows up and it's like, oh, crap. OK, well, we might need to pull back. So um, anyways, I'm. You know, we've still got this nice uptrend here. I would really start to become concerned uh, right around this area um, if hypothetically that broke down. Now, one of the reasons that I'm not totally concerned as of yet is because this move is not too unexpected. So we're looking at the dollar index right now. And I was kind of expecting that we would actually make it down to this very, uh, this is a decades long trend line. This trend line starts back in 2011. So I was kind of expecting that we would actually maybe kind of touch that area. Now we got a wick right into that area. And you can see where this uh, horizontal line is drawn because of their 
uh, and then right here, although right here you wouldn't exactly say that's the most natural place to draw the line. So that horizontal line is kind of more like a reference point than exactly a hard um, resistance or support. But at any rate, if we go down to the lower time frame here, this is a four hour now. Um, you know, when we kind of broke through this right here, uh, this downtrending line, you know, that was kind of a sign that uh, that this breakout might happen. So at this point, it does look to me like we're going to continue up. Uh, Dixie's going to probably come to this very, very long trend line up here. And just so that you can, again, get a feel for that. It's basically the splitter on this decades long, let's get decade and a half long trend line for the dollar index. So I do expect that we'll probably come up and touch that splitter. In a lot of ways, this kind of is a good thing because it really gives the markets time to digest and consolidate that big move that happened for the past two months. And it does kind of make sense that the markets might need to do that, that people are still uncertain. Personally, I haven't seen a ton of bullish sentiment out there, a little bit here and there, but a lot of the personalities that I see um, on YouTube and Twitter, they're all still kind of like very, very hesitant. And we probably should be like, we're not out of the woods yet. Um, so yeah, the short story is that uh, the markets to me are fairly uncertain. I'm not exactly quite sure what to do. I've taken some profit. I'm going to probably try and get back in. Um, and then if it breaks to the downside, then I'll just have to take a small loss on that. Um, but since I bought low, uh, for example, since, you know, as you guys know, I was kind of recommending to buy in this area right here, it's still easy to hang on to a trade right here because even coming down to here, even breaking down there, um, that's still in profit. So it's a good example of why you want to try and get into the markets at, at the best time that you can. Um, but it is difficult, right? It's, it's not an easy game to play. So the other thing we can look at are these reverse repos. So um, if you remember last week, I said I maybe kind of suspect that this might be a little bit of a floor down here that looks slightly like a bottoming pattern. Uh, well, that does seem to have been the case, and we've kind of gone up to the 100-day moving average now. Uh, this could very easily just kind of sit here for a moment and then come back down. And that would kind of be in line with what we were talking about on Dixie over here. So again, expecting Dixie to continue going up, which was sort of correlated when Dixie was going up for the, the bear market in crypto and stocks. Uh, we had the uh, reverse repos were also going up at the same time, kind of flattened out. And then look like they're trying to start a downtrend. This, this definitely does look like the beginning of a downtrend. Um, but, you know, things things in the markets can move a lot slower than, than you might realize. It's kind of funny. It's something that I've had to learn over the past couple of years is that you can see something's going to happen, like, like say, um, the fall of 2020. Like, we all know the bull market is coming, but Bitcoin, for example, still hadn't broken out to above 20,000. We know it's coming. And so people tend to be impatient because they kind of get a sense for where the market is going. And they're like, well, why doesn't it just get there now? And uh, personally, I've had to, to learn that markets do tend to move a lot more slowly than, uh, than we might realize. And then it's punctuated by these very sharp movements. So... Um, gold also is still slightly continuing this downtrend with everything else. Um, I guess that's I guess that's kind of to be expected if the rest of risk markets are going down. Gold tends to be somewhat correlated. Uh, we can take a look at the Z-scores as well, and you can see the dollar index in green here has been going up. Well, basically everything else has been going down, including bonds. Um, so here with bonds, it does look like uh, the 10-year yield is going to try and break out of this horizontal area right here. Um, Again, the markets are pricing in a higher rate, a higher ultimate terminal rate for the Federal Reserve uh, than they were even just a couple months ago. Uh, and then oil is still trending in the channel. Nothing special going on here. Uh, let's go to a larger time frame so you can see that easier. Yeah, so basically just still trending in this channel, which is good. We, we don't want to see anything crazy there. Um, we did get some hot numbers when it comes to like manufacturing um, Oh, I can't remember which one it was. It was like ISM or something. It, it was essentially related. It's like a precursor to inflation or something that relates to inflation. And it did come in a bit hotter. So I think um, part of this is people are speculating that, well, maybe the Fed is going to have to keep raising uh, farther than they, than they originally stated. Uh, but who knows, right? Okay, so we've got the S&P 500 here. And basically, we're kind of testing this bear market trend line. You can see I drew two of them. This gives us kind of a zone of resistance and support. So right now, this is acting as support, and this is kind of like the do or die line. If this thing breaks, um, it's very likely that a lot of people are going to just panic sell, um, and we're going to see another big sell-off uh, down towards the bottom of this area here. Um, but it hasn't broken yet, and there's still a very good chance that it could hold. So the ideal scenario for crypto stocks and Monero at this moment is for this to hold and just to kind of quickly come out of here and then you know start, start our way back up. If that happens... 
then you're very going to likely see something like, so oops, alt H, there we go. Um, we're very likely going to see some kind of like ceiling here um, that's going to get broken. We're kind of seeing a ceiling across the board. So the SSE composite is also called the Shanghai composite. It's basically looking at a composite of all the China stocks, um, you know, kind of like we have the S&P or the Dow or something like that for American stocks, which sort of summarizes what's happening in the markets. Uh, that's what the Shanghai index is. So you can kind of see they're also dealing with sort of this like flat top right here. You know, they can't really, this, this horizontal area of significance is still kind of getting problems. I've been watching this. I actually was hoping for the first half of last week that, um, that we would get a very clear breaking of this pattern, right? If we could get up here, break this pattern to the upside, that would have been a very clear signal that the rest of risk markets in the United States and, and crypto was ready to start going. Uh, but that did not happen. And so we're kind of still stuck in this, uh, this ascending wedge right here. So we'll just have to keep an eye on that. Um, again, nothing is really broken down here. Nothing is as terrible as happened. Um, I'm still in my broad huddle positions. Um, you know, we just might have to be a bit more patient. And, you know, you really have, especially if you're a trader and especially at a time like right now, um, I like to be on the markets. I like to make sure I keep track of them every day. I've got kind of a separate monitor where I've got some charts pulled up all the time. Um, so I can just sort of uh, get a feel for how price is moving. That even helps with like understanding the dynamics of price. Um, if you're if you're a trader, just seeing it kind of hour by hour, minute by minute, by minute, um, seeing it like that helps you to kind of understand the feel for how the market is. And that is intuitive, and it is a very dangerous thing to trade off of intuition alone. Uh, but it can be helpful, so, right? It's a it's a signal, and you just have to understand um, how to use it and how not to get carried away with it. Uh, let's look at total as well. We skipped over that. Total looks almost exactly the same as Bitcoin. Um, it's actually an easier chart to draw this this entire uh, wedge pattern sort of a sort of a broadening structure really uh, But this pattern is a lot easier to draw than Bitcoin this um, middle line right here uh, intersects a lot more uh, Likely areas whereas like the Bitcoin middle line uh, Intersects, you know, like you could draw this a few different ways, right? You could maybe try and draw that right there um, so uh, it, it, It's funny when big movements happen, people start trying to draw lines and the, the early lines are always very unreliable. So you have to be very willing to redraw your lines um, as time goes forward and the pattern develops uh, further. So um, we talked about Ethereum versus Bitcoin um, last week as well. And let's go to the longer time frame. This is the daily. And despite the fact that it's technically broken down from this rising line, it, it's actually surprisingly uh, holding up fairly well. So um, on in about three days, they're going to release Shanghai on uh, their last test net. They have three test nets and they're going to release this Shanghai, which is going to unlock everyone's stakes. So that should be bearish for Ethereum. But perhaps a lot of this uh, ratio bearishness for Ethereum versus Bitcoin was people just front running that. So um, for all we know, it could be like some small spike down after that happens, followed by another quick recovery as people realize that. Um, uh, that they're free to stake wherever they want. And they even have something called Rocket, which is like their own version of Pete Pool. And I think they've already got like, I want to say it's like six or eight, 10%, something like that in their um, in their version of Pete Pool. So I know a lot of people hate Ethereum, but uh, I have to cover it just because it's really where the big TradFi, a lot of the money is going to be flowing into Ethereum. So we, we're just going to have to keep track of that because um, it's, it's my belief that it's eventually going to flip Bitcoin, probably the next bull market. So... Um, all that DeFi craziness, round two is coming, right? It all basically kind of worked. Yeah, there was a bunch of scams, but uh, there's no way to avoid that. Uh, but all the stable coins, and I think everyone saw Coinbase, for example, released some kind of layer two on Ethereum, which is going to be centralized and stupid. But there are other layer twos on Ethereum that aren't quite so bad. Um, so just, um, again, just know that's coming. I just want all my Monero peeps to understand the broader um, dynamics of what's happening in the market here. Okay, so now finally to Monero. And we're basically looking at um, kind of staying in that same sideways triangle that we've been in for, for quite a while for basically the whole bear market. Uh, we've beaten that first resistance. It's That looks good. I, I don't think that we're going to fall below that. Um, these kind of other horizontal areas of significance right here at uh, 134, 141. Um, and, you know, those are approximate areas. It's not it's not like a hard and fast area. It's just I use that for kind of visual reference personally. Uh, so that's what the daily looks like. We still haven't broken out of the final big boss daddy um uh bear market resistance line but uh basically oh you know i forgot to show you guys the longer term i'm sorry schizophrenia here i'm gonna go back to bitcoin and total really quick um we're gonna look at 
the larger picture here, just so that you can get a quick view on that. Uh, okay, so we've got our bear market resistance lines here on Bitcoin. And I just wanted you guys to see that um, we're basically back below that. We're sort of in this zone, in this channel of bear market resistance. It's like we got above it for a moment. And I wanted to show you that because uh, Monero kind of did the same thing over here. We just barely poked above it and then we're kind of back down um, inside the range. And then total looks basically the same way as well. Uh, let's... And to the daily. Okay, here we go. Yeah, you can see total very much looks the same, um, basically broke through. Although total does look slightly better in this regard. So it's kind of funny because if you if you draw a horizontal line at the FTX Doom level, which happened right here, um, we're kind of still flirting with that line. Like total is having a hard time getting above that. Whereas Bitcoin, on the other hand, uh, this right here is the FTX Doom line. We're still well above that on Bitcoin. So, um, But then at the same time, total has sort of more cleanly broken through this bear market resistance. Whereas Bitcoin is still kind of like trying to get above that final, that final most shallow line that you could draw. So sorry about that. Sorry to go back and be a bit schizophrenic, but um, yeah, so Monero's kind of doing the same thing. We're a little bit further down. We're kind of more inside of this range here. Um, and obviously, you know, we prefer to break that. Um, we've got the ratio. Oh, you know, sorry. One more thing I wanted to look at Z scores. So if we look at Z scores on kind of a long time frame, um, you can see that there's a very clear uptrend, right? They're basically on their way up. Um, but if we look at it on the shorter time frame, you know, like the four hour, um, you can see that we're kind of in this downtrend right here, right? These z-scores are all trending down. Um, now we're seeing a little bit of you would want to call this divergence, but it's not really divergence so much as it's just volatility dropping off. So whenever you see z-scores um, or even RSI doing this thing where you see the bottoms are getting higher and then the tops are getting lower, people will say, oh, look at that RSI divergence or, or look at that uh, those z-score divergence. But it's not really so much that. What's actually happening is you're just compressing the volatility there. So um, you have to be careful. That's, a, that's an easy mistake to make. Uh, let's take a look at the RSI as well. Let's see if we can if we see something similar. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's basically it's very similar. You've got kind of this uh, downtrend on the top side and this uptrend on the bottom side. And you might be tempted to call this divergence. And it might be, um, we kind of need to see a little bit more of this play out, but it might not be. Uh, it could just be decreasing volatility over this over this larger time frame. So um, just something to keep in mind for the people that use RSI out there. It's a, it's a common mistake. It's an easy one to make. Uh, and then we can look at, uh, finally, the Bitcoin versus Monero, sorry, Monero versus Bitcoin ratio. Uh, we got the z-scores, which is kind of the same thing. This, this on the other hand, does look like it might be uh, a little bit of, um, of divergence. It depends on which time frame you look at, right? So the purple and blue lines, those are longer time frames. You can see they're basically still kind of trending down. Um, but then you can look at the green, uh, and that's mm, kind of double bottomed. It's, it's not really divergence, um, but it is setting up in such a way that, it, that that might be the case. That might be what it's going to do. Uh, so we'll start with the daily. Again, uh, when you start feeling blue and uh, and sour about the ratio, just zoom out, zoom out and take a look and say, hey, this is where we were four years ago or three years ago. Um, so, yes, we would like to be farther ahead. Um, obviously, we think that I mean, there, there has clearly been a significant amount of Monero adoption since this point down here. You know, we're kind of battling some of these nefarious forces here for price. Um, but I mean, overall, like, again, there are very few charts when you look at them against Bitcoin that they are very clearly in an uptrend, that they're very clearly higher. Like this is early Monero price. And even though we had this crazy blow off here because you know people back in 2016 and 2017 had a, a little bit more principle <laughs> than the uh, than all the moon boys that we have now. Um, but the simple fact is that we still are like overall um, at the launch price and significantly above the, those early days price. And we're sitting here holding steady relative to Bitcoin, even despite the fact, I mean, think about it. Like Bitcoin had the richest man in the world buy. It has nations that it bought. It's on every exchange. It's got the most uh, the, the most uh, visibility. Like everybody knows what Bitcoin is, right? Compare that to Monero, which is on hardly any exchanges, which is price suppressed and fractionally reserved, which everyone says, oh, they're just going to ban it and, and all this other stuff. And yet we're sitting here holding steady with Bitcoin. Like that's incredible. If you really think about it, the fact that we can hold our price to Bitcoin when most of the altcoins are losing value to Bitcoin. Like Litecoin, this bear market, Litecoin made new all-time lows relative to Bitcoin, whereas Monero is sitting here and holding its own. So again, I just, I just want you guys, like I know that people get kind of, I see it on XMR Trader. There's people that kind of bounce out and they're like, ah, no, this is, I can't do this anymore. 
But um, overall, like this is phenomenal. The fact that Monero is so suppressed and hated and not included in most of the crypto ecosystem, yet it's still holding its own for, for the better part of three, almost four years now. So um, as we talked about for the past few weeks, when this when this area broke down here, we kind of had to say, yeah, there's a very good chance we could come visit the 006 level here, uh, which is, does seem to be kind of what's happening. So um, I, I don't have any good opinions. I don't have any like solid reason to believe that it's going to go one way or another. Um, I guess hypothetically, if we expect that eventually markets are going to continue up, um, we might have more ratio problems. Uh, so, yeah, sorry, I don't, I don't have any good uh, any good opinions there to share with you guys or any good predictions. We, we got we got. I mean, this is in TA, but you know, we got the Monero Run coming up. We got Monero Topia. We got Monero Con. You know, that's all, a good point. The money all very bullish things. I mean, I know they. You know, they're, they're, it's that's that's not TA, but. Uh, you might see you might see some positive effect there. Do you think yeah, Monero, you know, the money run has done pretty good in the past with yeah. uh, in terms of price increases? Why why are they doing it on this date? Is it is that when they did it last year? It, yeah, we did it last year on April eighteenth, and that's Monero's birthday. So oh shit, it's, a, it's an appropriate date. Okay, yeah. damn, I forgot about that. We'll have to have a, yeah. a special show. What what day? Yeah, be. What day does that fall on? April eighteenth. Um, that would be a Tuesday. Okay. I think. I don't know. My rain man isn't good enough to tell you for sure. But I think it's a Tuesday. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Good good points, though, with the fact that, you know, Monero is holding up throughout time and slowly crawling up against Bitcoin, despite the fact that you have to, like, put in work to obtain Monero. <laughs> it's not yeah. like... It's not easy. There's friction, right? If you want to get like in New York, you know, I've been telling people for years, you know, talking about it. They're always like, oh, how do I get it? Like, well, Stop I like get a VP don't even know crypto to begin with. They're like, they're ready to like, you know, dabble in it. And it's like, well, they don't have it on the exchange in New York. It's like, oh, yeah. why? <laughs> but yeah, I granted it makes them more curious. And then those that are, are willing to put in the effort, figure out how to get it. But it is pretty amazing that people are still like, obtaining it in such a organic way right yeah yeah 100 percent. the other thing we never talk about too is like in 20 you know when we had that big run-up i guess that was 2017 20 the, i remember like one of the big things that led that run-up was the exchanges in uh i think it was like korea right you remember that mm, did they ban moneros yeah. like that far again yeah. uh no then it was ba it was banned after that but when we saw, um, it was that summer of, I think, 2018, that was one of the biggest run-up moments when it, I think it had gotten added to a exchange. I believe it was in Korea. It could have been Japan. I believe it was Korea. And it got mm -hmm. added to the exchange. And there was a, a major, like, major pump. <clears throat> but, you know, now it's, like, delisted from a lot of these exchanges. So Yeah. Japan, South Korea, UK, yeah. New York, yeah. Australia. So... But really, it's only a handful of countries, you know, if you think about but it. But, you know, the idea being, you know, do you think that that could be a major catalyst for Monero, right? Once those places start to open up again. Because I think, I think you know, my, my theory is, right, we're, we're retreating right now. I mean, we're not. Monero isn't. But whatever. That we're, we're under attack. There's, you're going to see uh, more, perhaps more delistings. Maybe we didn't peak there in terms of max amount of you know delistings of monero and you know countries calling it out but at some point you're going to start to see the opposite where you know countries start going beyond you know have had enough time to realize that it doesn't make sense to ban an unstoppable technology in fact they'd be able to gain more insight into it if they you know uh uh, embrace it right they'd be able to gain more data which is ultimately what they want to do right so if they embrace it allow it to be on centralized exchanges i do think that's going to be a, a catalyst for monero when you start to see that shift that so, seems probable like, maybe in like i don't know five or ten years time yeah i don't know what has like very I don't know clear adoption and everyone's yeah. using it yeah you know then the government's kind of like the government's kind of do that like they'll be like no you can't do this and then as soon as too many people start doing it they'll be like well you know it's it's fine right but I guess we have to add Dubai to that list now, don't we? Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> There's not really any consensus in the Monero community about whether uh, whether it will be banned completely or almost everywhere, or whether it will be um, completely opened up. Um, there are people that like 
they like, yeah, I want it to be banned. Everywhere should ban it. I hope it's, you know, let's just get it over with. And they think it's going to be like that forever. Whereas, you know, like right now you're expressing that, well, eventually they're all going to open up again. I think probably over the long, I mean, my belief is that over long time frames, humanity has becoming, is becoming more and more free um, across multiple different metrics. So it would make sense that, yeah, I mean, eventually we should see Monero opened up across exchanges, um, but it could take a decade, right? It might take some time. Yeah, it's like trying to hold back the internet, right? I mean, uh, China, you know, did, has done a decent wall with its firewalls, but it's it's pretty hard to hold back the adoption yeah. of something like Monero. It's pretty much impossible. And it has real utility to the point where people want, even now we're seeing it, they go out of their way to get it. So it's 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 inevitable. And so I, I do think we'll start to see a shift towards countries eventually starting to embrace it. I think we're on the other side of that, that pendulum right now, but I think it will shift back. Yeah. I wanted to make one more plug. Um, so the diver the divergence of script, um, I published that this past week. So anyone that wants to take a look at this chart, which tells you um, how the different exchanges are doing relative to Binance. So you can kind of see for the past, really for the past three, four days, largely they've been in negative divergences. Um, when we were talking last week, um, where was that? Yeah, we were we were in negative divergences when we were talking last week. They kind of went positive for a moment um, after the last price report, and then they kind of dip back down into the negative. But at any rate, I just wanted to show people that um, this script is now publicly available. I posted it on Twitter, and um, I'll post the link here in the in the YouTube video in a second after we get off. Uh, let me show you just a couple of the options. So look back. This is kind of the moving average. So you have to take. Ideally, we would take a second by second um, divergence between like say Binance and Kraken. Um, and then you would calculate the percentage difference that is. Um, but the thing is, sometimes they're above, sometimes they're below, but you have to average all that out. So right now, for example, I'm on a five minute chart and the look back is 48 candles or 48 periods, which equates to a four hour look back. So that's what this look back is. You can choose to make the volume adjustment, which I recommend that you do, because if you can have a large uh, divergence, but that doesn't matter if you didn't do any volume there, right? Or if you have a small divergence where a lot of volume was done, um, that's that's also significant. So um, you can do this by the close price. You can test, you can tell it, okay, look at, um, show us the divergences between the highest price that Kraken has had. Show us the divergence between the lowest price between Kraken and the other exchanges or between the close price. And I pretty much always leave that on close price. You can also choose to show the sum of all of these. Now, I don't... <laughs> I mostly just look at Binance. The others, the others I keep in here just kind of like for GWIS purposes. Um, but these other exchanges, like Binance is bad enough, but these other exchanges are probably faking their volumes to a significant degree. So it's really kind of hard to say for sure that they're actually reliable. Binance is probably at least slightly more reliable since they're kind of in trouble with the law right now and they're, they're probably on slightly better behavior. Um, but anyways, you can do some of all. You can add all these up. That's only relevant if you make the volume adjustment. If you don't make the volume adjustment, then summing them up doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. And then you can choose which of these exchanges you want to include in that sum. So that's kind of how to use this. Uh, like I said, I'll post a link uh, after we get off uh, the price report here. And um, yeah, it's free for everyone to use. Sweet. Awesome. Awesome, man. Great job, as always. Thanks, guys. Thank you. I enjoyed it as always. As always, thank you. Everyone enjoys it. Everyone looks forward to your reports. Yeah. So thank you very much for taking the time on your Saturday morning <laughs> and sharing it with us. You got, you <laughs> got any, uh, for doing this every Saturday morning. It's crazy. You <laughs> got any flights? Flight practice coming up, man? Uh, I have a flight next week actually to uh, Puerto Vallarta in a Cessna 182. Ooh. So that'll be my first flight in like the last 10, 11 months. So I'm pretty excited about that. Wow, it's awesome. Dude. What do I have nice? we'll, we'll pay for you to fly, give take us on a flight down there, man. We'll pay you in Monero to take us on a flight. You we'll do. see if I can make it happen in time. Um, so I called up this flight school, and what they told me was that I have to go get permission from the Mexican FAA, and that's a whole bunch of paperwork. So then they have to approve me, and then I have to do 10 hours here in Mexico um, to fly Mexican registered aircraft. So like I could fly. It's like November. It starts with uh, N. So uh, U.S. aircraft start with, uh, in and I can fly those into Mexico and really anywhere in the world, but I can't actually fly Mexican registered aircraft unless I get approval from the Mexican FAA. So um, I'm working on that so I can start renting airplanes down here. So I'm not sure if I can make that happen before Monero. Uh, we'd, we'd love to be your guest. Be Obviously, cool. you know, not paying customers, but maybe maybe we could send you a, a tip as a, as a gift. 
yeah, we can split the cost of the flight, and that's that's right. um, yeah. totally within the within the law. <laughs> uh, Look amazing. at you guys Fly down to Oaxaca the, after Monero <laughs> Topia flying out <laughs> with body. Oh my god, that'd be hilarious! <laughs> Bye, <Bye-bye>, everyone. Goodbye. <laughs> Monero yeah. pumping against like, Bitcoin. Like grease or something. Right. <laughs> yeah. As long as we don't crash, though, right? Then the conspiracies after that, right? They'd be like, what happened? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they took out Doug. <laughs> His Monero Topia was getting too and good. As Monero then takes off, that'll be the kid, the moment. Nah, no, it's Mexico, man. The Mexican Air Force. Like, like fuck, I missed out from, on it. From... I had to be a martyr. <laughs> All right, calm down. <laughs> I'm not even. <laughs> I'm discounting the fact that you're there too. I know. <laughs> Thanks, guys. You heard it live here. S- Sunita can come too. <laughs> Sunita survives. She'll have a parachute. Somehow she'll miraculously survive. Yeah. Jesus now Christ. these planes are fine. Like you train to lose your engine. Like if you lose your engine, you just have a glider and you set it down somewhere in a field or something like that. Yeah. Now I've been I've been on them quite uh, quite a few times. You went oh. bungee jump. Bing, right? You or no? I but went. Well, button not from a plane. No, I I, I went skydiving. Oh, sorry, skydiving. Yeah. That's what I was saying. I was like, why is that sorry? <laughs> sorry, skydiving. Yeah, yeah I went skydiving. I went hang gliding. But then I I, I blew out my eardrum. Oh yeah, that's right. I love it. Wow, it's fun. I only did it once. Yeah, I have like ear issues. I blew it out doing that, and then once jumping off a, a cliff in Greece from like a did, high height. Did you not like, do like the Valsalva maneuver or whatever? Oh, with the the pressurizing your whatever depressurizing your yeah where you equalize your ears every i don't know 100 feet or 500 feet or something uh i just don't i just have issues with uh with my ears he to the point issues, that they like guys. you know i guess that uh-huh. doesn't work for me but yeah i've always had like i had like I yeah from you. when i was a kid i see like, i ended up blowing out my eardrum multiple times and i had to get surgery on, on it Dang. but uh yeah no skydiving but could certainly fly <laughs> the plane yeah well i'm gonna do my best to get my uh get all my currencies and get my mexican um side of everything sorted so hypothetically we could rent a plane that mexico is slow when it comes to paperwork but uh, yeah, i'll do my best all right there's the hoping yay <laughs> all righty all righty thank you so much buddy Appreciate thanks you guys thank, thank you man. for the report adios Talk to you later bye bye